Hello Patreon supporters and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this Santa rock. So to begin with, I'm using a man-made rock that I made using a mold from the Happy Dotting Company. This is the three inch mold. And I use uh, cement, cement all is what I use to make my rocks. And this is unpainted. So it, it doesn't have a base coat. I'm just painting straight onto the cement. Now my camera froze in the very beginning. The first thing I did was I painted in the eyes black. That gives me my darkest value and it helps me know what my values need to be for the rest of my for the rest of the painting so I always like to start with the dark values or the eyes and then I paint it in where the hat drapes over his face and now I'm starting on his lips and I'm sorry my bird is crazy this morning she was real quiet until I started talking so I have to deal with her now to do skin tone <clears throat> I used uh, burnt sienna and some unbleached titanium white. You could use titanium white would be fine too. Um, and that gives you a really good uh, flesh tone. And by adding more white, it's going to make it lighter. Adding less white is going to make it more tan. That's a really good way to get uh, flesh tones. It's burnt sienna and titanium white or burnt sienna and unbleached titanium white. I just happen to be using unbleached titanium white. So I'm just going in and this is pretty much just my base coat. I am working a little bit on uh, blending some of the the skin tones around his eyes but I'm pretty much just blocking in the color when you paint straight on to the the cement and it might happen the same way with other um, like gypsum or um, like casting material um, it may do the same thing but it's it's a porous material so it soaks up all the water and it dries the paint almost instantly so you want to get a base coat down so that the paint won't dry as fast it won't absorb all that water because i was having kind of a hard time blending in the beginning and that's because it, the rock is absorbing just all the water straight out of the paint super fast. Now I do have this sped up. I have it slowed down. Um, I think I have it, it. It is sped up a little bit. This rock took me about three hours to paint because, I, you know, I'm a slow painter. I just don't like to rush myself. So um, I do have it sped up a little bit. But hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. And you can see I'm kind of, I, I'm not, I don't care about having brush strokes. I'm fine with that. So it's not going to be super smooth. And later on you're going to see, I'm going to use a different blending technique. You know, a lot of times I use glazes, which I'm going to use glazes, but I'm going to be using a different brush today. And it's the round blender brush uh, by, uh, oh, who is it, by Princeton Select. And I'm going to be using the number three round blender brush. And I have that, I'll have that linked below in the description. And I'm using uh, Liquitex Basics, uh, like I always do. So I'm taking a little red and adding it to the my flesh tone because you know you want Santa's skin is kind of rosy on his nose and on his cheeks. But again, I'm just it, this is really just blocking in. I am doing a little bit of blending. 
you don't even have to do that. You can just block in your base, my base coat, the base layers. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little strange. I'm, I've still got a, a bit of a cough and it making my voice a little hoarse. Plus it's four o'clock in the morning, so. You can see I'm trying to do some of this blending. You can, one way you can blend, and I'll have to do a different video kind of on this, um, is you can put paint down and then you can take another paintbrush that's that's slightly damp and then you can use that to kind of rub into the wet paint, not in the middle, but on the edge and it'll help blend it out. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, but this rock is so smooth and there's not enough paint on here to make it sticky. Uh, you need the paint to, it, like the paint wouldn't adhere to the rock very well. I don't have enough paint on there yet. So you can see I've, I've switched to a different, this is a uh, like a hog hair brush to try to get the blending. See, I'm kind of just blending it out. I put it down with one paintbrush and then blend it out with this other one. Um, but it's it's like there's not enough tooth on. <coughs> Excuse me, not enough tooth on this rock for that blending technique. That's why I'm going to go later on. I'm going to just give up on this and I'm going to go to using a the round blender brush. I can kind of, you know, if I keep working at it, I can get it to work. But on a canvas, uh, it, it just seems to work better when it's got a little bit of a tooth to it. So I'm going to start on the cheeks. And again... See, when I tried to blend it out, I was like, oh, this won't even work on this rock because it's just absorbing the water instantly. And this is going to look really funny here in the beginning. Remember, your base layers always look bad. And that's normal. So don't get discouraged because you can see how bad this is going to look bad for a while. Because I haven't even added his hairline on the right hand side yet. So a lot of that cheek color is going to be covered up with hair. <coughs> Excuse me, with uh, uh, his hair. In the, the now here I've switched to the blender brush and again it's the number three Princeton select round blender brush and this is going to go a lot of layers on these cheeks to get them blended correctly Give me a lot of back and forth. You see, I put the paint down and I'm just smearing it out with the blender brush. Sometimes I use the blender brush to put the paint on. Sometimes I'll use another brush to do it. It's I don't I go back and forth. It it doesn't really matter. You can use the same brush or you can use a different one when I use the and the reason why I do that is the blender brush if I just leave it as the blending tool I don't have to clean it as much so if I put color down with the one paint brush and use the blender 
just to to blend it out I don't it's less clean up I guess but I get lazy and I'll <laughs> you can see I'm using the blender brush now I'm going back and forth it's just I can achieve the same thing to, with either brush it's just kind of a what do I have in my hand I get lazy And the other thing is, you see how I'm staying with it? I'm, I finally moved off of it because I need to let this paint dry. It's kind of not working anymore because I need to let that paint dry really well. So I just moved off of it. You can see how the cheek does not look good in the middle. So this all works better if you let that layer dry and then move on to something else while it's drying. I think at this point I'm just using the round blender for most of this now. As opposed to like going back and forth between the two brushes. Now I still have thinned down my paint with water, so I've still kind of turned it into a, a thicker glaze. And it's, it's kind of like the consistency of milk, um, like whole milk, not, not skim milk. And see there, it's got too much water in it. Like it, that would be like a skim milk, and it doesn't see how it doesn't look good. That's because the I had thinned it down too much. I had too much water on my brush. So really, you wanted the about the the glaze to be about the consistency of of whole milk, where it seems to work best. And my hand is in the way. I'm just shading underneath the brim of his hat. And for the shadowed parts, it's pretty much just straight um, burnt sienna. And if I need to lighten it, I just add wa uh, titanium white to it. If I need to darken it up, then I'm using ivory black uh, to darken uh, uh, darken the burnt sienna. Sorry, <laughs> lost my train of thought there.
and I have very little paint on my paintbrush when I'm doing this. See right there, there's too much water on my brush and not enough tooth on the canvas. So you saw I blotted my paintbrush on the paper towel to dry it up a little bit. And that helped me clean up that surface. Now I switched to this other paintbrush to get into these kind of tighter, tighter areas. And you see, I had a big, uh, my paint wouldn't squirt out of my tube and I pressed really hard and it just blew out a whole wad of paint on my <coughs> excuse me on my palette so I'm <laughs> cleaning it up and putting it back in the tube it takes a few minutes to get that little mess cleaned up so we'll use what's left we'll just use what's left of on the palette so now, for the whites of the eyes, you a lot of people just want to paint it white, but it isn't white. I added just a hint of blue to slightly, just slightly gray this up a little bit, because you don't want it... Now, this isn't obviously a realistic, like a person, but you still want it to look as realistic as possible. Um... So the eye, the white of the eye, don't paint it white. It needs to be kind of a, it's going to be either like a on the gray side or a little on the blue side, um, but not stark white. So now I'm taking, this is just a, I think this is a brush I've actually cut a lot of the bristles off of for a liner brush. I don't think I could find my holotap liner brush uh, when I was painting this for some reason I couldn't find that paintbrush which you know is my go-to liner brush so this is just a brush that I had uh, cut some of the bristles off to make a liner brush uh, I keep having these coughing fits so I have to mute the mute the microphone if you're wondering what's happening with all the clicking I have, I have a pretty consistent cough. So now I'm just using this to paint in his eyelashes. Because the eyelashes are so dark, I can kind of glaze over them. Um, 
which was why I went ahead and just put them in. Otherwise, you could wait and do this a little later on. I know I have my rock stood up. Sometimes it's just so much easier for me if I can stand the rock kind of on its edge to look at it and see it more straight on. So now I'm painting in all of his hair. So it'd be his eyebrows and his mustache and beard. But I'm painting the base coat. Remember, this is straight onto the rock. I don't have a, a base coat on the rock. So this is just straight onto the cement. And so I'm just doing a base coat, but I'm doing it in a gray because I, you know, white's not going to stand out on this. So I need to paint the base of it a darker color so that the white stands out and there's some, it'll instantly put in shadows underneath the hair. So I'm using a darker gray in areas where I feel like there it'll be shadowed. Like kind of by the hat, it'll be a little bit darker. And you can see I'm even pulling, oh, well, I'm going to keep that part a secret, I guess. I don't know. Oh, I grayed up on the brim of the hat. I added gray. So now you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just painting this all a base gray. Oh, but the hairs that are going to kind of curl up off of his eyebrow, I also painted that little area gray, too. I'm sorry, this, I get caught up in painting and I don't pay attention to the fact that I'm off camera. Hopefully I don't. Now I'm adding the, the hairs on the side of his face. Now he does have a belt. You can't see it because it's kind of on the curve of the rock. I am going to have a bell on the side, hanging off the tip of his cap. <clears throat> you can kind of see how I have it penciled in there a little bit. I, the bell is probably one of my favorite parts of this rock, and unfortunately you can't even see it really well. I wish I'd kind of repositioned it. But I didn't realize it was going to be a part that I liked so much. Have to mix up some more gray. Now mixing this up a little bit darker. I need it to stand out different. Oh, I guess I'm still doing the beard part. But I need for the mustache to stand out against the beard so that I know where it starts and stops. And you want it to be a little bit darker under the nose than it is at the ends. The space coat doesn't matter too much, but the when we paint, get the white, the hairs painted in, you do want it kind of shadowed under his nose. I 
So see, I'm going in and adding a shadow into the whites of his eyes at the bottom. I'm, I'm putting the shadow in at what would be the bottom parts of the white. Then I'm going to add in the sparkle on his eye. It really starts to come to life when you start adding in that kind of detail. And this is the inside of his mouth. And I'm just painting this black. So now we're just taking, this is just straight titanium white and my, I'm using a detail liner brush to put in, these are kind of the individual hairs. You know, and I want his eyebrows to look kind of unruly. So I have hairs going, you know, flipping up, kind of strain off. <laughs> And you, make, you want to make sure your brush strokes go in the direction of the hair growth. And you want to, the other thing is you want to make sure that, that you don't cover that gray completely. You want to leave that gray showing through in areas. And I'm not taking the white all the way up to the mustache. I'm leaving a lot of the gray showing through under the mustache that's going to give the depth and make the mustache stand out like it looks like it's standing out away from the beard. Now for the hat, I wanted it to have texture in the paint, so I'm using a hog hair brush. Oh no, I think I'm using a raked brush, actually. Um, it is a raked brush, and this is one I don't use a whole lot. Let's see if I can figure out where it, this is from. It's a clear brush, so it's hard to see through. Okay, it's a Royal and Lang uh What is this? A Royal... Aqu a Royal Aqualon Wisp 2935. And it's a ra what they call a raked brush. But see how it's... it's That's going to give it that furry uh, texture. I will try to link that below in the description if Amaz if it's on Amazon. I know I got it off of Amazon. As long as I can find it again, I will link that below in the description as well. So now I'm kind of shading, adding a little shading into the uh, into the hairs.
you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm just shading around his mouth and around the mustache. And that's a number three Royal and Langnickel round brush. Now I'm painting in his tongue and I added just a little black to some red because I want this to be, you know, a darker color, obviously. And then we have to kind of shadow in his mouth a little bit. So now I'm making up kind of a pink to highlight his lip. Now I'm working on the shadows. Now I'm back to my round blender because I'm trying to get the, I want to make sure that his tip of his nose looks round. Now I'm going to fix this cheek also. And again, I'm just glazing over color and I'm going to be going kind of back and forth between uh, shadows and highlights <clears throat> and to make his cheeks look rosy you add just a little bit of red to the burnt sienna tan flesh color that you made add a little hint of red to that and that's going to pink it up enough to give the rosy effect off camera there. There we go. Kind of shadowing around the hair to make that kind of pop off his face a little bit. Sometimes it can be tricky getting your glaze the right consistency. And when you don't have it the right consistency, it'll start looking blotchy. If that happens, just let that dry and glaze over it again. You can cover it up. Just like I did on this cheek. Uh, that left cheek where it was looking really blotchy. I was able to fix that. It's just, you know, if you have a bad layer, just let it dry and go over it with a new layer. It's so the one thing that's really nice about acrylics. You never hit a point where you can't can't continue layering. Like if you've ever worked in uh, colored pencils, eventually you get to a point where you can't layer any more color on top. Um, with with acrylics, you don't ever hit that point. You don't hit it with oils either. It's just oils take longer to dry <laughs> so it's not as, it's not as fast It'll take you forever to kind of complete a painting if you have a lot of layers so now I've kind of darkened him up a lot so now I'm going to go in and start highlighting 
like really working on the highlight on his cheeks and stuff. And then he's got, you know, some wrinkles down his nose and on his forehead uh, that I've got drawn in there or painted in there. And I use my finger to kind of blend out the paint too. It's amazing how good of a paintbrush your finger is. And this looks strange. The adding the white isn't the right color, but it's to lighten that area because he needs some wrinkles at the edge of his eye. And then I can just glaze color over that. But it, it's a quick way to put in a wrinkle. I'm just, I'm just kind of shadowing again around his eyebrow. I was working on the hairs of his eyebrow. I'm, <clears throat> I have such a small area that I can have my rock in when I'm zoomed in this close. Yeah, it's kind of easy for me to get off camera. I'm just, and now I'm just working on wrapping it around the edge. And I'm taking just a little bit of black and burnt sienna and going underneath his hat kind of add a shadow a very thin shadow underneath there so now it's all just tweaking the details uh, is this going to be all off camera I didn't know that this was I'm working on the bell and for the bell I used now this I use craft paint, which I don't normally recommend because it doesn't have a um, light fastness rating. But I used rose gold and worn penny. There's the rose gold. You can see how I'm going in and painting the bell. The base coat was rose gold. I'm just painting that edge. I hope this isn't all off camera. I haven't I haven't gone over this footage yet. So you can see I'm using a glaze and this is going to to add the detail to the to the bell. And now I'm shadowing a, around the around the bell just to lift it off the off of his hair. Now I'm using, I'm getting some, this is the worn penny, which is more of a copper color. And I'm just kind of glazing that over the areas. And I'm doing it to give it a round effect. Um, so this is going to be on the edges and around the slits of the bell. 
when you do that, it, it helps give it dimension. And again, these are these are metallic craft paints by let's see. They're Deco Art metallic acrylic paints. And again, it's in rose gold and worn penny. I'll try to link those below in the description as well. Just doing some final details. Just working on those, the wrinkles around his face. That's where I'm glazing in the color over uh, where I turned it white. Now I glazed that red over the black so that the black didn't look so flat. So if you notice, I had red, red paint on my paintbrush. But since it's black and the red is translucent, it's, I'm just glazing that over it and it, it kind of deepens the black. Now I'm working on adding some details to his hat. I just want it to have like a slight wrinkle in the hat just so it doesn't look so flat. And adding some shadows at the back of his lips where they meet his mustache. And now I'm just pulling some of the hairs into his skin to break up that line. I had just kind of a solid white line over there. So I'm just trying to kind of break up that line. And that is it. So here is, I'm going to show you the detail on the edges of the rock. You know, how I painted in the bell and kind of added the wrinkles to the hat. But since I wrapped these details all the way around the edge of the rock, I wanted you to be able to see exactly what I did. And I just love how this bell turned out. I hate that it's all the way around the 
edge of the rock, but But there it is. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.